Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to briefly inform you about our organization and about our research on immovable property restitutions in Terezin Declaration countries. Our organization is the European Shoah Legacy Institute, which is an NGO created by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic in 2010 to advocate and facilitate implementation of the principles of Terezin Declaration. Our main focus is on restitution of immovable property, recovery of looted art and provenance research, social welfare of Holocaust, Holocaust survivors and other victims of Nazi persecution, and remembrance research and education. Uh, Recently, our expert team uh, carried out an extensive uh, survey on immovable property restitutions in all 47 Terezin Declaration countries. This survey is a basis for creation of online database that will serve both for education and exchange of best practices and will be available online in November 2016. Uh, the database will be officially introduced in the conference, which we plan to organize in uh, November in the European Parliament. I would like to bring to your attention just a few examples of the results of the research from three Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, in the fields of private, communal and hairless property restitution. The now just brief historical overview, the Jewish population before the war in Lithuania was 160,000 Jews, in Latvia 95,000 Jews, and in Estonia 4,500 Jews, of which 90 to 95 percent were murdered. So the Jewish population today is about 10 percent of the original population. Now I would like to talk a bit of private property restitutions. In Lithuania, uh, there were two laws enacted in 1991 and 1997. And under these laws, 98% of rural and 72% of urban claims were made. Uh, unfortunately, non-citizens of Lithuania were excluded from the restitution process. The different situation was in Latvia and Estonia. Uh, restitution was carried out in REM, which means that uh, real property were returned. And if that wasn't possible, then substitute property or compensation vouchers were received. Claims could be filed for agriculture land, forests, homes, buildings, and land surrounding buildings. The biggest problem of private property restitution in Lithuania was that most of the Holocaust survivors fled Lithuania and became citizens of other countries. And that's why they were not eligible to claim property in Lithuania. Latvia enacted approximately 20 different laws on restitution and privatization of private property. Eligible claimants were persons who owned land until uh, before 1940 and their heirs. Claims could be made by both citizens and non-citizens. Restitution was carried out in REM if not possible, substitute property or compensation vouchers were received. There were certain limitations, for example, state-owned residential, residential buildings and property and land with natural objects of national importance couldn't be claimed. The biggest problems with private property restitutions in Latvia were very short filing deadlines minimal global notification so that people living abroad didn't have uh, enough time to file their claims, and also reluctance of claimants to accept substitute property because it wasn't of equivalent value. Uh, according to governmental response, uh, the significant part of private property in Latvia has been restituted, 
but uh, government couldn't determine the exact number. <clears throat> in Estonia, Estonia enacted two laws in 1991 and 1992, and altogether 200, 233,000 claims were accepted and 99.6% of claims were satisfied. Uh, claims could be also made by both citizens and non-citizens. Restitution was carried out in REM, if not possible, substitute property or compensation vouchers were received. In total, 542 million euros has been paid as compensations. There were also several limitations. For example, properties bought by current owner in good faith couldn't be claimed. Now, uh, a bit about communal property. In Lithuania, before the war, uh, the Jewish communities owned about 1,500 properties. Uh, there was a religious association law enacted in 1995 and eligible claimants were religious associations existing before 1940. The Jewish community of Lithuania, which was formed in 1991, wasn't then eligible for restitutions. There were limitations that only religious properties could be claimed, but not schools, hospitals, libraries, which were owned by Jewish communities before the war as well. Only few properties were returned in Lithuania. In 2011, Lithuania enacted law on goodwill compensation that provides uh, 53 million US dollars as compensation to the Jewish community, which will be paid over next 10 years. Doesn't include restitution in REM. This payment is equivalent to 30% of eligible communal property value. In Latvia, before the war, uh, the Jewish communities own approximately 52 cemeteries and uh, around 270 properties. Latvia enacted law on restitution uh, of communal property in 1992. Eligible claimants were religious organizations registered in 1940 or legal successors, which was very difficult to prove. Restitutions and compensations uh, were dealing again only with religious properties. Approximately 30 properties were returned. No compensation could be, could be paid for properties destroyed during the war. In February 2016, a uh, new law was approved that deals with return of five communal properties. However, 270 properties remain unrestituted. Uh, in Estonia, uh, they have a unique approach since, res since restitution laws for private property restitutions applied equally to communal property restitutions. Eligible claimants were organizations which existed before 1940. But in Estonia, uh, restitution of communal properties wasn't a big issue since most of the properties were rented and not owned by the Jewish communities. That's why only few properties were returned. Uh, and finally, uh, hairless property. Uh, the often extermination of whole families left significant number of properties without hers to claim it. Uh, none of the Baltic states, as well as other Terezin Declaration countries, have any hairless property laws. Uh, 2009 Terezin Declaration and 2015 conclusion of a welfare conference uh, state that this issue is important to be addressed and that hairless property should be used as a basis for material needs of Holocaust survivors so they, they can live in dignity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.